Hello there. This is Christian. Welcome back to my computer and Fusion Physicity. And in front of us, we have a Trammel of Archimedes or a Do Nothing Grinder, like some people call it, a BS Grinder. Uh, well, it's doing something. Uh, the handle here, uh, specifically the hole in the handle, is drawing an ellipse. That's one of the things with this uh, mechanism. And the whole idea of Wittgenstein is that we want to draw an ellipse of a certain size. I'm going to turn off animation and reset position. And let's start by use, uh, having a look at the geometry immediately. We, I'm going to work through this here. I'm going to make mistakes. You have to, yeah, you have to live with my mistakes and have a look. I hope you can learn something. Uh, we're going to start with like the basic geometry. We have a handle, we have a base, we have two sliders. Looking from the top, they are. To me, the handle is the driving part of geometry and everything. If you move this to the position here, this is when the it's the handle is aligned with the major axis. You can see that the distance from a hole out here to this point that's connected to this sorry this slider here, this is half of a major axis. If I do it, move it to the other position, which is this one, of course, there are two of these positions. You can see that the distance from the hole here to this slider center point of a pin through that. I'm going to change the view style so you can see there are like holes going through here. So the distance in this case between this slider and that hole, turn on colors again, uh, is half of a minor axis. So we need to know the major and minor axis of ellipses we're going to draw. And from that we can create a handle and then we can create the rest of the part. So I have a new file here, which I already had to start saving, start by saving. And just for visualization, I'm going to start with a sketch and I'm going to draw an ellipse. Just for reference, it makes things a bit easier to see what I'm doing. Drawing ellipse, making the ellipse center, coincident to the center point or origin point. And I'm going to add two dimensions, use a parameter. Ellipse, uh, major, a major axis, let's do that 220. The more, the larger the difference between the axis, the harder is the design. Because uh, the sliders will move outside of things, you will see it. I think you will see it in this design I'm making. This will not be a fully parametric design where you can uh, simply uh, 125. I'm just going to add some dimensions here, uh, where you can just edit the major, minor, and everything change in the design. I don't want to. Some things will change, but you have to go back and forth. I want to show you how I worked up this design. So we have these two here. We're going to add the dimensions to a sketch. So we're going to lock in our little ellipse. And this is going to be the major. Going to up a browser, open a browser, finish sketch. And I'm going to rename this uh, and I tape pushing all of my own buttons, ellipse ref, just for reference so we know where things are. And as I said, to me, the handle is the thing that's drawing the rest of the geometry. So I'm going to start with the handle, create a new component. Going to be our handle. Like that. Hit OK. It's going to become active. Let's open up, create a new sketch from the top. I'm just doing this like a simple slot. You can do some other design. Easily, I'm just going to select from region point as one start, pull it out, something like that. Could project in things, but I will simply do this here. This is like from here to the major or half of it. So this is going to be major divided by two. We need to decide a width of this one. Let's do it 10 millimeters like that. Uh, I'm going to S and do an arc. I'm going to do three point arc. Select these two here. Pull it out until I get the tangent constraint, which Fusion did not add. Okay. Let's do it coincident instead of. Can I pull this further out like that? Coincident between the center point of that arc and the origin. So you get a fully defined circle. Going to do a second circle here. Uh, this is going to be the connection point one slider. This is going to be put in the, to the second one. So I'm going to dimension from this circle out to here. 
and that's going to be our minor axis divided by two so this is the base geometry of our handle and from this we're going to do some extrudes e for extrude select all and not for lips profile goodbye all the profile e for extrude select all the profiles of our handle and we'll just leave it like three minutes i'm gonna do the handle upside down the handle is the only thing i will lock in with joints later I'm gonna hit okay and i'm gonna e for extrude once more and these two circles here these are let's do them 0 0.8 I just like to lift these up slightly, so I avoid the handle uh, snagging on the sliders. This gives me some spacing to the top face of the slider. Could have, of course put this also on the slider, yes, yeah. But different ways to do things. For the define sketch, let's hide it. So we have made our handle. The second thing I want to do, I'm going to need a new component. I want to create the base. Uh, I have this translucent thing uh, where only the active components is totally visible. Other components are slightly ghosted. It's a part of the preference settings. I'm going to create a sketch. Do it from the front. I need uh, some type of rectangle. It's going to be midpoint constraint to... I'm going to hide the hand off now. It only confuses me. I'm going to do a line. I like to have a center line here. It's easier to constrain things to line once again turn off constraints or, or con construction line sorry gonna do it something like this i'm gonna do like a slot like this and a line over here this line here is only a construction line and i want to I'm just gonna move this slide over to the side so i can do a coincident hold down shift and find where is the midpoint the midpoint of this to here and the same down here, the midpoint here to this line. It means uh, things will now stay symmetric around the middle without any symmetry constraints or strange things. D for dimension, of course. Uh, let's make this 80 millimeters wide. We're going to make it make it 12 high. I want uh, 1.8 millimeters of material below the slider. I want the same here, so I'm going to lazy, just pick up the dimension. I think I want the same up here, pick up this dimension. And the last one, of course, here is the width at the top here. Let's do it, do it eight millimeters. Yeah, that looks like a nice slider. Maybe I want, no, nah, it's just going to work. I'm going to be perfectly, uh, yeah, I'm going to do like this. You can play around here, you can differentiate, you can do T-slots. This is quite easy to 3D print with these nice angles. So this is thought for 3D printing. Going to finish sketch. Going to hit E for X2. Select our two parts here. And in this case, I'm going to turn on the ellipse once again. I'm going to change this to symmetric. So hold ID here. I'm now going to extrude to the full width here. Uh, this, But of course, I want to avoid this base going beyond the ellipse. So what I want to use is the minor axis. That's too much. So I'm going to do, I think the pen holder is going to be around 10 millimeters in diameter, maybe 12. So I do minus 12 times 2. Need to remove it on both sides. So I do symmetric with full lengths. And I hit OK. So this is the width. If it's not, when I'm moving the pen around, the idea is to put a pen in this holder out here and draw an ellipse. I will not hit anything. And I only did one R now. So S for circular pattern circular pattern of bodies select this body what do we want to move it around around the z axis partial only 90 degrees and two of them hit okay i now have let's open up a base i have two bodies i want one so we do combine select our two parts join nothing keep tools or stupid stuff like that we now have one body and just for myself I have a base extrude here. I'm going to right click and rename that. That is our uh, base width command. 
this is the extrude command that is define the width why i name it is good if i need to go up and change my parameters without searching for the timeline change parameters i can find my base and i can say we see that there's an extrude command that's called base width that has this distance here this means i can directly uh, edit my uh, change parameters and find this parameter within the design without needing to find uh, which extruded it naming things are good e once again for extrude i'm going to hold i want this inside profile so i'm going to hold down the mouse button and find the correct profile this profile once again symmetric and i'm going to be lazy just distance all is going to cut everything hit okay s circular pattern of this case a feature this extrude cut feature uh, runs again around the z axis once again partial because i only need 90 degrees and i need two of them and i need to do adjust because i'm cutting through a different geometry hit ok and open up and hide that sketch and we have our base and below that we have our handle now immediately we're going to do a thing which i normally forget to get joints to work one part needs to be grounded and obviously the base is the one that is going to be grounded like that and we can move back to our top level to have a look at things turn on our handle so we are this far what i want to create now is one slider the sliders are identical so it's enough to create one create new component do a slider I'm going to turn off this sketch from the base. Hide the hand of now, hide the ellipse because I can use this sketch now. Uh, it's not, I don't think it is preferred to use sketch of another component, but sometimes when I do things like I can be a bit lazy, I'm going to E for extrude, select this profile here, and I simply do it symmetric. And for now, I don't know the distance of this, I'm simply going to do this 30 millimeters like that gonna hit ok and we have our little slider let's look from the front but problem is now that the top face of the slider is aligned with the top face of the base and that can cause problem with snagging and stuff so we're going to do it e for extrude select the top face and let's add 1.8 millimeters to this so we get some space and air between uh, the top of the slider and the top of the base we need a hold for this, so could use the hold command. Shall we do that? Gonna hide the base for now. Shall we do a hold command? We can do a hold command. Let's do that. Simply top face. Can it find the center point of this? No, it can't. So we're gonna do a sketch. Let's do a sketch instead. Sketch like that. We have a region point. Let's do a circle. Simple circle. Let's do it eight millimeters. Uh, that's a bit too much. That will be hitting the side. So we're going to do it seven. Yeah, that should be a good size. Extrude, extrude this distance to object to the bottom of the part. Like that. I'm going to open up a slider, have a look. We have a fully defined sketch. I'm going to hide the sketch. I was hoping the whole command would work in the center of the face, but it didn't. Uh, turn over base. So we have the base, we have a handle, and we have one slider, but we need two sliders. So what I'm going to do, go back to our top level here, S on the keyboard and find circular pattern. Circular pattern in this case of components, our little slider. Once again, let's find the Z axis. We're going to do partial, 90 degrees, and we're going to do two and hit OK. I'm going to hide, let's see, hide the sketching base like that. So we only have the components visible. So. We have a bunch of components and I have uh, within, uh, is it inspect, you have it? Where are you? Selection, it's, uh, I have component drag activated, I need to be a bit careful. I can't move the base, it's grounded, but I can, by mistake, move around other components. So I need to add some joints now. I have designed these sliders in place, so I can do as build joints, because they are in a correct position. Uh, type is going to be slider. So we can pre uh, select that. The motion is going to slide back and forth. And the components, let's do this and do this. And we have two components. And Fusion is wondering where do we want to snap this? And sliding joints are working perpendicular to the face. So we could select 
this face out here but i prefer the face of the slider and i might do some changes to geometry but i know one point that we not move around and that's the one at the bottom here because you see the slider will move along the bottom of the base like that check the animation once again the animation only shows you the relationship between two components so that looks correct gonna hit ok once again uh, as build joint select the other slider select the base this face hold down control and find the bottom snap point you can see the slide is in correct direction movements lose correct and hit ok now we need to uh, attach our handle so we're going to make the handle visible hide the base hide one of the sliders doesn't matter, really matter which one i do i'm going to create a joint create a joint and i want to make it around this center here and then i want to find the center of this face here if fusion jump when you're doing like in a face here you want to lock it to face hold down control and fusion will only jump between the snap points on that face so i want this face here i can hold down control to make it easier see there's only one snap point on this cylind cylindric face like that that if it's course of course in the wrong direction so we're going to flip it we're going to check it was a revoluted joint that is correct and we're going to hit ok and things flipped around why did it flip around well it's because the base is grounded the slider is joined to the base and now the handle is connected to the slider going to turn on the other slider hide the first one once again do a joint let's see we can i'm going to hide the base again it's only the way find this uh, joint point here and let's find the top of this hold down control like that it's going to spin around the handle ha happens to spin around we really don't need to care we need to show is is it flipped in correct direction we need to flip it or in is it moving uh are the two components moving in relationship to each other correctly and we're doing we're going to hit okay turn on our all our components and let's have a look how does thing look can we move it around yes we can drag it around we can even animate things i think yes we can we can do let's open up a joints i prefer the revolute joint because they spin around 360 degrees i have no joint limits for the sliders in this case and i see i made a small mistake in this design i wanted the sliders to move further out do we want to change the parameters for fun let's do that let's change our major ellipse here to 275. let's see how much this crashes my model not too much but this presents a little bit of a problem that's why i wanted to do it revert position is you can see uh, the slider ends outside of the base and we can't yes we could extend the base in this direction gonna turn on the lips but the problem is when the handle moves over to this position we cannot change the length of this when as i said when you have a very large difference between the two axes you can end up with problems so we need to edit the length of our sliders and just for the fun of it in which position can we see how long our little uh, handles can be that is in the like this point this point they are as far as possible from each other the same here you have a 45 degree position that's the interesting one so we're going to take one of these revolute joints to drive joint and position it by 45 degrees like that and have a look at things so i want to edit the length of my slider so i'm going to move into my change parameters find my slider and i have forgotten to name which one it is now that's just bad of me so we can do that later it was the first extrude i know that so we can have a look at the part now at how long can we make this no problem i can edit this and make them 60. yes you can do the calculation with fun math the longer they are the more stable the, the crammel will be 85 of course uh, just if i make them too long they're gonna intersect and i don't want that so i can make them 90 millimeters long gonna hit okay i'm gonna revert i don't want to save the position so i'm gonna revert the position 
and let's see this is from top let's shift over to wireframe so we can see things moving within the component and you can see how they are moving around let's turn on the colors and we can see oops sorry i can take the slide and move back and forth they are not intersecting they are moving nicely i can right click do animate joint relationship looking from the top we can see things moving around very nice gonna hide the lips for now sorry hide the lips stop the motion hide all the joints i don't want to see them for now uh we are still some things to do we need some pins down here so we're going to hide the base hide mace revert position so things are in a good place create we're going to move over make sure the handle is our active components create a sketch do that on the circular face i selected the face that's on top here i will hit p for project and project in our little two circles here as you can see let's see where else a circle like that gonna hit ok simply e for extrude uh, select our two beautiful profiles distance to object i want them to go all the way through the slider so i'm going to up to here but i want them to be slightly shorter so i don't snag or grab to the bottom of the base i want them to rest on top of the sliders so i'm going to do this minus one millimeter so i get some clearance within and what else do i need oh of course i need a holder for the pen i could create a sketch out here and uh, we'll project in the top face of this and it's a bit dark and hard to see things so i'm gonna uh hide my two sliders and hide the body of the handle like that and do a circle how large you so i'm gonna mark these and turn them into constant geometry do a circle here let's do that i do going make it make it 12 like a fort and how we're we going to do this nicely there are a couple of different ways to do this uh i want to do finish sketch i'm simply going to do that one let's see if we can get this to work turn on the body once again step one i want to cut away from the reader hello we're going to make a new part here going to extrude this distance to object I'm going to clear up things like that going to cut that away i will now extrude with circle once again and now do it to two sides uh this side here i'm going to go to object the top of the handle and the other one i'm going to do distance to object can i turn on the base here i want this side to go all the way down to what would be the top of the surface that the base is resting on so i'll select the bottom of the base here and maybe i want to have some clearance here so i'm going to do minus 0 0.8 slightly slightly shorter and not do join i'm going to make a new body for now i'm going to chamfer this so i get a slight chamfer on this let's do it five. Oh, that's too much simply just do it three millimeters s i'm going to do a shell command select the top face here let's do it 0 0.8 select the bottom face here so i get a hole through like that and i have a nice place to put the pen of course the dimension of this needs to be adapted i hate the shadows gonna turn them off now sorry effects uh, object shadow makes the part less dark uh the dimension of this hole here i don't want to do that you need to adapt that to the type of pen or if you're going to put a lighted sliding knife or whatever you want to do to do ellipses with it and let's open up a handle see we now have two bodies you want to combine those two combine two bodies join yes we're down to one go back to our main part here what do we have left yes we have one thing left oh the slide is really long i like that uh, uh we need some offsets if we're going to 3d print this we need some offset i like to do that as late as possible in the process i have a dirty sketch here let's open up a handle of hide the sketches get a clean looking model uh, i will not touch the base i would do offset faces yes offset faces uh, remember these two components are the same so we really only need to select the faces of one component like that 
gonna hide the two sliders i want to do the same thing to the faces here of the pins going through uh the sliders i'm gonna do most minus 0 0.2 that's just a thing i know works for my 3d printer you need to adapt that to your 3d printer gonna hit ok make fusion think for a while turn all my, all my parts you can do a section analysis just to look at things and of course it does in the wrong direction flip it over as we can see here there are some small clearance around uh, uh, the pins the same with this pin here and we can now also drag this out and have a look you can see the slide is resting at the bottom of this but we have some small clearance here on a simpler console i don't want that i'm gonna hide the base that's one thing more i want to do i'm gonna activate this slider i'm gonna add a small chamfer to these edges here and give them like a two millimeter chamfer yeah i'm gonna do that it's up to you i like that to have some clears in the corners with nothing jams down here i want it to rest at the base and have these two long faces that runs in here to be supporting it back to the base or the root of everything let's have a look let's have a look at our lips just do some animation have a look this is i think i've done all of it i might have forgotten something you can see i was playing around changing some things so from this model now that i've done here i might go back and try to make everything parametric if that is the desire to be able to drive it with only these two parameters and maybe some parameters for the size of the pens and stuff like that and of course if we want to make our base a bit more fancy we can do like we can hide all of these make sorry make the base our active component hide this sketch we can do fillet i do this sometimes fillet i want to do a full round fillet and simply select the face make sure the side face turns blue this one here hold down control this one this one by doing this you can um, move uh, the base closer to uh, the lips you want to do that go back to our root level turn on the sketch animate our joints and have a look so this is what it looks like this is just for fun i hope you have learned some stupid workflow from this as usual and something you can use so play around with this and of course next step is making these with uh, three sliders it doesn't make uh, anything in the part better it's just fun to have three sliders with that said, take care, see you around, and goodbye.